Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to collect data from the user using a model and forms in ASP. Let's start by building a simple model. That's of course adding a class. I'm going to call this order item. I'm going to collect five things from my, ob my user. If you're not sure how I did that, I simply typed prop and hit tab, and it creates for me a simple class. So I do prop, tab again, pops them, tab, come over, and it creates default setters and getters. And then I like a constructor, even though I'm probably not going to use it, I like just having it. So right click quick names, create my generate constructor. Yeah. Okay, so I have a basic class built in here. I'm going to now create a simple form to gather information for my order. You can add this to whatever view you want. So I'm going to add it to home. So I'm going to add a new view. I'm going to call it order form. And this form I'm going to build is going to use basic vanilla HTML objects. Um, we have more power in ASP, and I'll do that later on in a different video. You can use post or get, whichever you prefer. I prefer post. Slightly more secure, it's not repeatable. I uh, can't accidentally order something twice. If you use get, it creates a URL that's repeatable and copyable. So I'm going to create a drop down box and use labels to make things look reasonably nice. I call that anything Teal runs on the server. Now, this first entry is really important. Processor matches your view. So by doing ASP4 processor, I'm linking it to here. But it's yelling at me because it doesn't know what order item is. So we need to put that up here. Oops, wrong place. Why are you still yelling at me? Why are you still yelling at me? Semicolon. Lowercase model, come on. There we go. Okay, so app model order item says use the order item model on this page. It's difficult to use multiple orders or multiple models on one page, but it's really easy to use a single one. So inside here, I'm going to create a couple options. I don't know why I build a machine without a processor, but you get the idea. I'm going to make the value equal to the processor. I'm 
Put as many as you want here. And then I can keep this going all the way down. Let's add one more. I'm going to create a number box for this. And again, the ASP4 matches it to an item here. I'm going to put a button on this here just so we can just see what it looks like. It's going to look pretty bad. I can tell you that. Oops. Okay, it doesn't load up because the, the controller. I should have known that. Let's go back to my controller. Let's add. A simple response. It's obviously I can put a link on the menu bar, and I will eventually. Beautiful. All right, so it works. As promised, it looks ugly. So I need to make this look better before I move on. Um, if you're at this point in your development, you should know better than to create a form that looks this bad. So I'm going to use Bootstrappy to make it look nice. To make this form look good, we're going to use Bootstrap, and you're going to use all the Bootstrappy classes that come with it. So let's take a look at the bootstrap forms. <clears throat> uh, basic form setup. They've got everything separated into divs. Um, MB3 is margin bottom three. Other objects can be there like form group for older, um, for older bootstrap. Um, you can also adjust this margin top, whatever you want. What's important is the class inside here, which is form label and class for form control. <laughs> Those become important. Those will make this <clears throat> fill your screen. So I'm going to use those in my objects. The three again is some number of spaces below. If that's too big, adjust the two up to four, whatever you want. I'm going to format this with a control shift E and then hit D. I'm sorry, control E. E, then D, and that formats it. So, as mentioned, I need the classes in the label and the classes in the form control. I'm going to put the class in here for the object. And if you can't remember what that was, again, go back to Bootstrap and just look it up. It was Form Control. And I'll use some classes here. Let's see if we look better now. Oh, I need to run this guy as well.
Here we go. Looks a lot better. By default, the form control fits inside the grid that you selected. Um, since I'm using the whole width of the page, it takes the whole width of the page. All right, beautiful. So now we just need to build the rest of the form. All right, so I've got the form built. Let's take a quick look at it. Build a computer. The processor list here. I've got the RAM set up in increments of four. The speed set up in increments of 0.1, and the hard drive in half a terabyte. You see, I also added this to the menu bar. So what we need to do now is we need to create a thank you form. Whenever the person puts the information in, we need to process it and do something with it. Um, in reality, we would pump this to a database, send this to our manufacturing location, something. Uh, but we're just simply going to respond and say thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my home folder. Add a new view. I'm going to call it thanks. And what thanks is going to do is going to use the model and spit back what the person put in. It looks like a typical form letter, or if you've ever built a report, say in Access, same idea. So I'm going to add one thing up here. I'm going to make sure we use the right model. So the project is called Computer Store. Technically, isn't necessary, but it definitely helps to ensure you get the right model here. So I'm going to say thank you for your order. So I'll put some happy words here. I'll deal with pricing in another model. And then I'll show what the specs are. If we're going to see what I'm doing here, I'm simply going to display each one of the objects. This isn't going to be beautiful, but it will certainly work. So oops, it's not going to run yet. So I ran that for no reason. I need to respond to this post. So let me stop this once it runs. To respond to the post, we're going to use annotation inside of our controller. If you've done annotations in other locations, such as you know testing or web services, you understand what's happening. So I'm going to have another instance of order form, except this one's going to be overloaded. It's going to accept an object type order item. Above it, I'm going to say I'm going to respond to HTTP post. This is the annotation. This says whenever you come into order form via a post, run this particular object. If you come into an order form via get, run that particular method. So in reality here, we would do something with the order. And again, I'm going to do that in another video. And I'm going to send the order in here. I'm going to call the thanks view. So I'm not going to respond back to order form, which is what we've been doing in the past. I'm going to go to the thanks view. And I'm going to pass in the order. So 
So I'll build a computer, pick an i5, put 16, 3, 2, Okay, so clearly this is an error. And it's a typical ASP error. It just looks like a vomit of mess. Um, but you have to read it and you will often tell you what it is. So invalid operation cannot create an instance of type computer store. Well, it's like, I can because I have a constructor. Model bound complex types must not be abstract or value types and must have a parameter list constructor. Aha, right there. So that's our error. And it says it again down here, must have a parameter list constructor. Now this error happens to be easy, but this is your process. When you come across an error, read the screen, figure it out. Don't just immediately start Googling the error because it's not always going to help you. I'm going to stop my project. And I'm going to go to my order item class. I'm going to add the constructor. So I've got the parameter list default blank constructor. It doesn't do a darn thing, but it needs to be there so that whenever this line fires, it can create it. Had, I would not have gotten that error had I not built my parameterized constructor. So let's run this and see if that solves our issue. Okay, so build a computer. Let's, let's build a beast. Just so I know that it went through there. So I did an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, 4 gigahertz, 3.5 terabytes. Let's order it, and there it is. Um, so my speed's a little off. So I see I've got the wrong output and speed, but everything else is there. So let's see what I did stupid in my thank you page. Yep, I have processor there, forgot speed. Run it again, it should work. If you're wondering why I don't use this hotfix, I don't really trust it. It works, it's just that I've had some scenarios where it didn't, and it annoyed me. So for 32 gigs of RAM, we set a 4, 3.5, me. Bam. All right. So now you know how to gather data from a user and post that information into a form and then, do, and then just simply spit the data back. If you want to do something with that object, you do that right here. Uh, we could calculate the price, we could write it to a database, we could send it to the builders, whatever you need to do, but that's where you do it, right there in that part of your constructor. Thanks, good luck.